Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Mark chapter 6. We're going to be starting verse 51 this lesson. We'll be finishing when Jesus walks on the water and also uh, when they reach the shore. We'll be finishing chapter 6 where Jesus goes to Gennesaret and we'll see what happens there. All right. Before we begin, though, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we left off last lesson, uh, Peter had uh, went out to Jesus and he uh, began, I guess, to start looking at the winds and the waves and things. And he took his eyes off of Christ. And he didn't, he didn't remember the promise of the Lord where Jesus said, come. And he started looking at his circumstances and he began to sink. And he's, but he recovered in time enough to say, <laughs> Lord, save me, right? And Jesus comes and I believe that he grabbed him by the hand and pulled him up. And they both walked to the ship back on the water. And when they get to the ship, now we see verse 51. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and they wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Now, it says here, so Jesus comes to the ship, right? They both get in the ship, and it says they were sore amazed. Well, your version may something a little different, but they were, they were tremendously amazed. They were shocked at what had happened. The fact that Jesus came walking on the water and that Peter walked out to Jesus, <laughs> walked out to Jesus on the water, right? You're seeing this event. First, we're seeing Jesus walking on the water. And then Peter says, hey, Jesus, if it's you, can I, you know, can I come out to you? Tell me to come to you and I'll come. Jesus said, come, right? And then all of a sudden, you're one of the other disciples. You see Peter, he's walking down the thing and he's walking on the water. This is too much. This is way too much, right? So they, when it says they were sore amazed, you can bet they were amazed what they just saw. And then of course they see Peter sinking and then they see Jesus grabbing him by the hand, right? Taking his hand, pulling him back up and they come back walking. They didn't swim to the boat. Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't go down to Peter's level. No, Jesus brought Peter up to his level. He brought Peter up to his level. And that's what Jesus wants to do in our life. He wants to bring us up to his level so that we can, even though we are in the midst of this troubled sea of life, we can still walk in a, in a, in a conquering mode. Right, We can still walk upon the sea. We don't have to be in the sea. We can be walking on the sea. How? Because of Jesus and because of his word. That's the only way. That's the only way we can live above our circumstance. Doesn't mean we, it doesn't mean our circumstances change. No. But it means that we can walk above our circumstances because of who he is. And, and because of what he says in his word, standing on his promises, right? So they both come walking back and they're sore amazed. Verse 51, right? <laughs> they were amazed in themselves beyond measure and they wondered. Well, you, you bet. I, I know I'd wonder too. Verse 52, and it says, why? Why were they sore amazed? Why did they wonder? And it says in verse 52, because they considered not the miracle of the loaves. Now, this Greek word for considered not is tsunami. Tsunami. And it means to bring, uh, to bring or to join together. Right? So <clears throat> it means to bring things together or to join things together in the mind. So it means to understand. So, but basically it means that the disciples did not put two and two together. If Jesus could multiply bread 
for 5,000 people, then he could also walk on the water and still the storm. They didn't put two and two together. They didn't, they didn't tsunami. They didn't, can, they didn't bring two things together in their mind. And then it says, <clears throat> verse 52, for their heart was what? Hardened. Their heart was hardened. And this Greek word for hardened is poro'o, poro'o. And it's in the perfect tense, passive voice, perfect passive. Now the passive voice means <clears throat> that their hearts received the action of being hardened. Life, life in this world initiated to their hearts that these things were just, they were just not possible. This is, and this is what, this is what the world around us will say. The world around us will tell us it's not possible for you to walk on top of your circumstances, to live, to live a, in a sense, a victorious life through Christ and through his word, right? It's not possible. It's not possible to walk on water, but Peter did. It's not possible. <clears throat> so people, many Christians today receive the action, <clears throat> excuse me, receive the action of, of this world system, right? Their hearts were hardened because they listened to the world. Oh, that's not possible. I know the Bible says that, but you don't really believe it, do you? Right? The perfect tense means that the hardness was complete. When it says their hearts were hardened, it means it's all over. It does, there's no more hardening that needs to be done. Their hearts are hard, right? <clears throat> it's complete. It's settled in their thinking. It wasn't, it wasn't that the miracles Jesus did harden them, but, but their hearts were already hard. So it wasn't, it, remember, it wasn't the miracles that, that Jesus did that hardened their hearts. No, it was their hearts were already hardened by this world system. And therefore, because their hearts were hardened by the world system, they were sore amazed when they saw Jesus walking on the water. It's not possible. This can't be, right? And this is what happens to us today. We listen, we listen too much to the world, to the dictates of this world. Listen, we're, we're, you, listen, you and I, we're child, we're child, children of God. We're children of God. We're not from this world. We're, we, we, we are citizens of heaven. We're citizens of heaven. The moment we got saved, Jesus, right? The moment we got saved, we became a citizen of heaven. Our king lives in heaven. And with, with our king, listen, all things are possible. All things are possible through Christ. The world's going to tell you one thing. We need to stand upon God and his word and, and have our hearts focused on Christ. But we belong, listen, we belong to another kingdom. We belong to a kingdom of all things are possible. Where our God supplies all of our needs. In the midst, what, what, did, what did David say, right? Thou preparest a table before me. Where? Where does God prepare a table before me? In the presence of mine enemies. It doesn't say, Peter, Paul, I'm sorry. David doesn't say, you know, God's going to take care. God's going to take care of my enemies. And then we're going to sit down and have a nice meal. <laughs> no, no. God prepares a table before us in the midst of our enemies. In the, in the very presence of our enemies, he prepares a table that we can sit down and rest. And that's not what the world says. The world's going to tell you that's foolishness. How can, you know, how can God prepare a table for you in the midst of these troubled times? How can you have peace in your hearts? In the midst of this troubled world, in the midst of the situations that you're going through, 
How can, how can it be? Can't happen. Don't receive that. Right? No. We're from another kingdom. Our God is our king. And with God, all things are possible. With God, he is able to prepare a table in our hearts in the presence of our, of our stormy life. He's able to do it. Now, let's get into verse, verses 53 to 56. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret, and they drew to the shore. Right now, Gennesaret was located, it was located on the northwest corner of the Sea of Galilee. It's a little bit, if you look on your, your maps in your Bible, it's a little bit south of Capernaum. So they got in this ship and they, they were going. Jesus walks and uh, probably about half, the rest of the half of the way, Jesus and the disciples finished sailing over to Gennesaret. Now, verse 53, uh, when he passed over, they got to Gennesaret, they drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway, it says, they knew him. Straightway, immediately, when, when Jesus and his disciples get out of the ship, they knew him. They knew Jesus. Now, this Greek word for they knew him is epigenosko. And it means to have full knowledge of something. It means to know something by experience. Now, when they saw Jesus, the people of Gennesaret, when they saw Jesus coming down out of that ship, they knew who he was. Why? For they had seen him before. They knew him because they had seen him before. Now, verse 55, and they ran through that whole region round about and they began to carry about in beds those that were sick when they heard when they heard that that he was there right uh it says they ran they ran through the whole region now this greek word to run through is peri treco peri treco and peri means around and treco means to run so this Greek word describes how the people of Gennesaret ran all around the region. They covered the whole land of Gennesaret. So it wasn't like, you know, some five minute thing. They went, you know, a uh, quarter of a mile away. No, 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 no. When they saw Jesus, man, they, ah, they, they started running. Jesus is here. And they went and they started going around the whole region of Gennesaret. Let's see what they did. Right? It says that they, they carried those that were sick where they heard that he was. So when they, because it took time. It took time for them to run to these areas of Gennesaret. And, and to, I mean, probably a couple of hours. And when they heard, where's Jesus now? Well, we got to take this sick person to where he is now. So verse 56, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, verse 55, and it says to carry about. They begin to carry about. And this Greek word is peripharo, peripharo. And these people, these people of Gennesaret were so excited that they carried the sick on their beds to where they heard that Jesus was. Jesus was going to villages and cities in Gennesaret, and it took time for the for the for word to get around that region where Jesus was. So wherever they heard Jesus was, they would take him to that place, that city or that town. And then verse 56 and whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and they besought him that 
that they might just touch if it were, if it were, but the border of his garment and as many as touched him were made whole. So it says here that they were laid, it says, the Bible says they laid them in the streets. They laid these sick, sick people in the streets. Now, our most, our most deepest concerns, the infirmities of, the, of our life that hinder us with God must be put in Jesus' way, right? If we are the, the most deepest concerns that we have in our heart, we must place them before the Lord. Lay your petitions before the Lord and let your requests be made known unto God. Jesus is passing by. Don't let this opportunity uh, go by. They, laid, they heard that Jesus was going from one town and he's going now to another town and they would get in the street waiting for him to come and they'd lay the people in the street. Just please, Jesus, just touch them. I know if you touch them, they'll be whole. They'll be well, right? And this is what we need to do with, with our life. We need to continuously lay our concerns, lay our situations in front of Christ. And it says, if that they might touch the border of his garment, word must have spread quickly by those who witnessed the woman with the issue of blood for 18 years and that she touched Jesus's garment and got healed. If you go back to our study in Matthew, chap I'm sorry, in Mark chapter 5, Verses 25 to 34, the woman that had an issue of blood for 18 years, she came and she just touched the hem of his garment. Word must have got around about that woman and what she did. And this is all that they wanted. They, they, they wanted just for, to touch his garment, right? Where her healing took place is not far from Gennesaret. Where that woman, the, the woman that had the issue for 18, 18 years, uh, I'm sorry, eight, yeah, for 18 years, that woman didn't live very far from Gennesaret. So word would spread quickly. What happened to her? So now this is exactly what they're doing. And then it says, as many as touched him were made whole. As many as touched him were made whole. You know, Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. Jesus didn't only heal those that he knew would believe in him. Jesus had compassion on all who had needs. He even healed those who come only to be healed, but wouldn't believe on Jesus as the Messiah. There were people there, I'm sure there were many people that came for a healing, not because they wanted to believe in him as the Messiah, but because they simply just wanted to be healed. Let this be a lesson to us to freely give what has been given to us and not to hold back on unbelievers. We've, we've been freely given things by God. We should freely give them out, whether they're, they're saved or not. We shouldn't judge and say, well, I don't think that person's ever gonna get saved. I'm not gonna bless them, right? <laughs> no, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus healed them all. As many as came, he, he touched them, they received their healing. And it didn't matter whether in the end they were going to believe in him, whether they were going to say, you know, Jesus, you're my Messiah, or whether, whether they were going to be shouting in the end, crucify him, crucify him. He healed them. Freely you receive, freely give. All right, we're going to start chapter seven next lesson. But until then, Walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.